Hi Lucy, it's lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for coming and joining me today. So I'm Tom King and I'm an ecologist here at the Canal and River Trust. Lovely to meet you Tom and uh, welcome to my patch. This is where I grew up on this stretch of canal so I know it like the back of my hand. Oh it's lovely and hopefully today we'll see all the different habitats we've got on our waterways and the amazing corridor of life we've got that's unbroken for 2,000 miles through England and Wales. Brilliant, yeah and what a day for it as well. Beautiful. So I thought I'd show you this little patch of, of reed bed behind me, which for me is quite a new habitat here on the canal. Um, growing up it, it hadn't really established, so this has grown in the last 10 or 15 years since I was a teenager. And the amount of life that they bring in down the canal, it's just ridiculous. It comes to spring, you know, only in a couple of weeks or so, we're going to be having some of the spring migrants returning, so things like reed warblers, sedge warblers, you can just hear them singing through the reed beds, it's gorgeous. So recently um, we've actually been putting reed beds in our urban areas. So I've been working for the past year on bringing floating reed islands into Manchester wow. city centre. So where we've got just hard edged and we've naturally not got these really important habitats. Mm. So now we do actually have these brilliant wildlife havens in the centre of Manchester. So we're hoping that they'll bring in the invertebrates and then that will encourage birds to start breeding there and actually um, even mammals like otters when I was there on Monday there was a moorhen nesting in the reed in the reed bed the floating reed island that oh, we put in. Already? Yeah. Excellent I mean that's a perfect example if you build it they will come they will find that space and they'll use it so you know I'm, I'm always surprised somehow that nature moves in so fast but it just goes to show if you give them the opportunity they'll turn up that's brilliant news. We're here next to a bridge, and bridges are really important for wildlife. A lot of people don't actually realise that. And one of the reasons is because of their age. So some of them are maybe 200 years old, we need to look after them. But that's because they get cracks and crevices, and that can be really important for wildlife in itself. So birds can nest in them, bats especially love our bridges. Um, but even small things like invertebrates, like insects, will live in them. They love to bask on the sunlight. When I'm coming for a walk down the canal, I'm drawn to the bridges as features. I feel like, you know, you can see it's a significant shape in the landscape. It's got all those nooks and crannies. And one of my favourite things to do, I've got a little bat detector that's one of my favourite little gadgets, is come down in the evening on late spring, early summer evening and just sit and watch the silhouettes of bats. You know, they, they, they're living in those little nooks and crannies, but they're coming through all of the insects that are gathering around the water's edge, just feeding off them. It's absolutely glorious to watch. Oh look, we've got some really important habitat here, some scrubland, and we get that quite a lot on our waterways. Yes, I absolutely love scrub. A bit of scrub is it's just brilliant for wildlife, isn't it? it is. When summer comes in, all these things that people typically don't really like things like brambles, nettles, teasels, thistles. Yeah. Wildlife just absolutely loves it. I'm all for a little bit of mess because mess is what nature loves. And for me, like a bit of mess means opportunity to see cool things. Yeah. You know, if you think of how much shelter those brambles are providing for, you know, nesting birds, things like chiff chaffs that nest really low down, they'll be nesting in places like that. And then all of those plants that are providing all that food for pollinators and insects, it's just where there's scrub, there's a lot of life. I absolutely love it. <laughs> there was there was a sw like a wash with pollinators, like yes. bees and butterflies, yeah. when the when the flowers come out. It's a beautiful sight, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant stuff. Our waterways in many urban areas, they're actually the biggest and maybe the only open water that mm. that there is, and that's really important for different types of wildlife. So. We'll have invertebrates that will be on the bed and then we'll have plants that are growing up and there might be, there's loads of different plants that people don't realise. They're actually living under the water that you can't see, mm. maybe ones that are floating on the surface. Mm. And then actually in the water there'll be all the fish and we have some amazing fish populations, some really big pike, that they're the big predators in the waterways, but then the small like roach and perch that just sort of like live in the plants and the reed beds. Perch are the ones with the tiger stripes on. They are, yeah. yeah. And oh. the spines on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how amazing is that, that there's something so beautiful and kind of almost exotic looking under the surface <laughs> of a canal in a city? 
Look what we've just found here. There's a pile of mussels. Now, I think that they're potentially swan or duck mussels. They're quite common, actually, in our waterways yeah. and even in our reservoirs. Um, and they're really interesting species because they can live for maybe like 15, 20 years. That's amazing, isn't it? They're not a very um, well-known species, to be honest. Not, no. not many people will realise that you get freshwater mussels. Yes. That they're living in, sort of, even in our urban areas. I think we can find it hard to relate to animals like mollusks, can't we? But the fact that there's this whole, I don't know, series of life forms underneath the surface of the water going on under there, all that drama. It's about out of the way, you don't see. You know, mating and reproduction and predation and everything, it's, it's fascinating. Oh, look here, we've got on this bank, we've got some lesser celandine. So we're right next to the canal. And we've got this lovely patch of plant. I absolutely love lesser celandine. Look at it, it's gorgeous. It's such a beautiful spring flower, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, beautiful. For me, this is like the signifier of spring. It comes after the snowdrop. Yeah. So important for those early pollinators. Um, and it, I mean, it just loves it, it just grows so... Yeah, well, so everywhere, everywhere. Doesn't it? Look how much it spreads. I mean, the thing I love about lesser celandine, I don't know if you might know this fact, but you know, I mean, they're so yellow, aren't they? Yeah. But um, they've got like a, a double layer to their petals. So it, where it shines like that, they've got one that's like packed full of pigment and the other one kind of reflects light. So it makes it this really shiny kind of beacon for insects. Like, come and pollinate me. <laughs> that's brilliant. One of my favorite things about walking along a canal Obviously, it's a blue corridor, but the green corridors that run alongside it, all of these trees and woodland and hedgerows, you can see how wildlife would use that as kind of a, a road network to travel along, wouldn't you? Yeah, and that's really important. And one of the things that we're really trying to change is actually create more trees and hedgerows on our waterways. So one of the things I've been doing over the past few months in Manchester is actually planting over a thousand trees into this urban area yeah. to try and improve yeah. the habitat yeah. and the aim is actually that we'll provide that really good corridor for things um, to move through the landscape yeah. and into our urban areas especially where they probably don't have anything else to exactly. any other habitats to use so on our waterways we've got some really important wildlife sites mm. so we've got over 70 sites of special scientific interest so triple si's and they're designated for such a wide range of different things so um, in my area i've got two reservoirs which are designated for um, a really rare moss that only appears when the water's low yeah. so it's called dwarf bl bladder moss it starts growing when the mud's exposed um, i've also got two canals which grow through the heart of Manchester so the really urban area yes. um, the Rochdale Canal and the Huddersfield Narrow Canal and they're designated for the really rare plants and unusual plants that are growing actually in the water and that's really important because in some of the areas that I cover some of the communities are really struggling and actually our waterways are the best nature space that they've got people don't need a car it's free to get to they can literally just go there and actually they're really important wildlife places mm. and they've just got so much diversity in them and actually it's brilliant to be able to work in them and actually try and encourage more people to engage with it and bring more wildlife in because that's really important is actually people helping us to see what's there you're exactly right we know you know especially after 2020 and lockdown just how important these green and blue spaces are for people the mental load that you feel lifting when you spend time out in nature it's just, it's just magic, isn't it? Pure, wonderful, magical stuff. So I think, yeah, being able to have places like this where we can open the door for nature to get back in, wildlife to recover, we're just gonna be connecting more and more people with it. And if we can connect more people with it, we can save more of it. So I've had a fantastic morning out with Tom, walking down the canal of my childhood, reminiscing and also appreciating this blue and green space for all of the wildlife and nature that it offers. So it's really important that we can get as many people as possible involved in the Canal and River Trust's new campaign, Protect Canals for Nature. And there are two different ways you can get involved. So if you're coming for a walk down a canal, you can play Spot That Habitat, where you let us know what habitats you see as you're walking along. And if you're at home and perhaps can't get out and about, you can go online and play Tap That Habitat. So you've just got to look at some pictures and tell us what habitats you see. Something really nice to do, perhaps sat on the sofa at night with a brew. Get involved with Protect Canals for Nature and head to the Canal and River Trust website to take part.